Welcome back to my little channel. Today I want to do something slightly different. So I'll start with introducing myself a little bit. Now, some of you may already know this, especially the ones that interacted with me a bit more online, but I assume most of you wouldn't know this about me. But I'm an atheist. And I used to be a militant atheist, I'll not lie about that, because I thought religions, any form, were, well, a problem. An opium for the masses, so to speak. And I didn't really change my mind that much on it, but I've learned to nuance. Now, I'm always saying how nuance is important, so let me clarify a little bit on that. I still think there is no God. I'm still an atheist. But I don't have a problem with people that do believe there's a God. Because to me, and this is from an anthropological and social point of view, to me religions are meant to give humans direction. We need something in our life to make us think and act according to our best interest. And that might sound weird, but that is what religion is. It's helping us learn to be social towards each other. Now, there have been moments where religion got corrupted, where religion was used to turn on other people. This is something we can still see in Islam, where even other Muslims are attacking other Muslims because they're the wrong kind of Muslim. This is something we saw in Christianity in the Middle Ages and, well, let's be honest, well up to the 18th century. So this is the problem with religion. But I had to learn, I guess, and now I have to admit the problem isn't with religion, it's with humans. Humans will use anything to start fighting other humans. Religion, funny enough, kind of wants you not to do it. Well, most religions. Um, there are some religions that will actively call you on attacking people that are not of your religion. But on average, most religions are inherently wanting for peace. Religions give us rules and guidelines on how to behave. Behavior that, if we are honest, will have a beneficial attribute, will be a beneficial attribute to our life. For example, most religious people will tell you that abortion is a bad thing, which it is. I mean, there are reasons why abortion could be a good thing. I mean, if you as a parent will not survive the birth of your child, then yeah, that's something to think about. If your child will not survive birth, then that's something to think about. The child is unwanted is not a good reason for abortion. I know that this is what has become of abortion, so this is why uh, most religions will tell you, no, it's definitely bad. Why? Because, and this is true for everything, if we accept some of it, people will push for the rest of it. You give them a finger, they take a mile. That, that, that attitude is within all of us. That's how we as humans kind of are motivated. If you want to make sure a kid goes to a certain area, the first thing you tell him is that he's not allowed to go there. And you know the kid will go to that area. It's our mindset. And I, I can't put my finger on it. And yes, hashtag not all. There are always people that are the exception to this. But on average, this is our mindset. And religion, and this is from an anthropological point of view, and this is true for all religions out there, they give us guidelines, behavioral um, guidelines. And this is something that most atheists nowadays miss. They turn against the religion they came from, be that Abrahamic uh, or, or other, and they have nothing to fill that gap because they still need those guidelines, because they can't see those guidelines outside of their religion. Now, this is a problem that a lot of a religious societies have. I mean, yeah, sure, I'm not driven by God to say that, yeah, murder is a bad thing. I'm not driven by God to say abortion can be a bad thing. Because I, as a human, recognize 
why it is. Now, there are people who will say, yeah, you only recognize it because of God. Well, yeah, sure, if that's your guideline, and if you want to play that game like that. I, I used to be militant about this. I, I used to get angry. Well, why are you so stupid that you think it's only because of God that I can recognize that these are bad things? And I started to realize the problem isn't that these people think like that, because it's, it's the result that counts. Murder is bad, God says murder is bad, therefore I won't murder, or murder is bad, therefore I won't murder. The end result is not to murder. And if someone does that because of God or because of, well, any other reason, the end result is all that counts. And I started noticing that the more militant I get, got, sorry, past tense, the more people on the other side got militant. And the problem isn't that you do or do not believe in a God. I couldn't care less if you believe in a God. You shouldn't care less about me either. And I can understand that you would feel like you could convert me, then I would go to heaven, etc., etc. Yeah, you know, thank you for thinking like that. But you do not have to convert me. I don't believe in a heaven. Could I be wrong? Yeah, sure. Cross that bridge when we come to it. The thing is, the point of people who are willing to be good Christians or good Muslims or good whatever other religion is out there. There are lots of religions, let's be honest. They try to be good people and they use their religion as guidelines. I try to be a good person as well. I'm not trying to use religion as my guideline. I try to use observation and, and, and other values that throughout the world have been proven to be correct. Does that then make us inher inherently different? I used to think this was the case. I was a militant atheist, as I said earlier. But I have to recognize that, no, it does not. It's the militant bit that is the problem. So if you're religious and you're militant about your religion, then it's the militant bit that will cause the strife. But this is true for atheists as well. It's the militant bit that causes the strife. If I am to attack people for their religion, that says something about me, not about them. Well, I could call them all kinds of names, but it says something about me. Having said this, I want to talk about a religious topic, the Tower of Babel. Why do I want to talk about the Tower of Babel? Because in our current society, it has once again become very, very important for us to recognize what's going on. For those of you out there who do not know the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel is a story which comes from the Bible, which is also known in the Torah and in the Quran. They, slightly, they are slightly different, but they basically have the same background. People are living together. People all over the world speak the same, lam same language, and they all come together to build a tower to reach heaven. God is upset about this, and to stop them, he splits those people up, because now they're all united in one cause, with one language. And to stop them from doing so, he gives them all different language. And because of that, the whole project eventually dies. This is the very short of it. But, now the funny part, myths like the Tower of Babel are not unique to the Abrahamic religions. I mean, there are stories like this in a lot of different other cultures. I mean, in, 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 in Nepal there are stories like this. The Cherokees had a story like this. Um, well, I mean, there are more stories like that. Just, just, just go with that. So what is the underlying story? Well, the underlying story is that if you want to divide a people, you make sure they won't understand each other. And once you've made sure people can't understand each other, for whatever reason, they will fall apart. 
as a group. And you don't have to do much. You just have to start with creating the vision. And in all fairness, language can be a, a, a combining, a unifying factor. But language indeed can cause division. And this is something, if we look at the world today, this is something that's actually happening quite a lot. The left, and I often have conversations with one of my friends online about whether the term the left or regressive left is even a fair one. Um, but you know, for the sake of argument, I'm going to use the left in this case, are using lots of different terms to describe lots of different things. And they don't even agree with one another. So this is when the left starts splintering up more and more and more. How is this happening? It is the Tower of Babel. These people stopped talking the language of the people they talk with. And then other people will say, well, they're still talking English. Yeah, sure, if that's how far the narrative will go. But <laughs> let's be honest, the word woman means something else to them than it does to the average human being. Just to give one example, the term man, the term child, the very essence of meaning of words, if you change them, it will crash communications. And this is not something the left has started doing lately. Hell, maybe it wasn't even the left that started doing this, or the people that started doing these things weren't considered left when they started doing this. This is where postmodernism comes from. Well, I should have said postmodernism, sorry, pronunciation and all that. The whole idea that words only have meaning because it's assigned to it is a reason for them to question all words. Funny enough, words do only have me meaning because we assign that meaning to them. That's how we communicate. But by breaking away that fundamental worth value of communication, these people have basically disrupted society. And this is happening in America right now where, for example, the riots, I'm going to use the word riot just to appease the internet gods, riots in, in uh, Washington by the people who supported Trumps are obviously far worse than the peaceful protests by BLM and Antifa, where more people died, vastly higher numbers of damage were caused, and society in general has given quite a bloody nose. So if we compare the riots in Washington of the Trump supporters, the terrorist acts, to the peaceful protests of Black Lives Matter and Antifa, then we notice the difference between the value or the perceived value of these is created by language. The word riot apparently doesn't mean what it used to mean. The word peaceful protest can be used whatever way the left seems to find acceptable, the left, the media, whomever. This is the Tower of Babel. By changing the words, by changing the value of these words, we disrupt our society. Now, it's very clear of what's happening in the United States right now. The theme has been going on in Europe for quite a while as well, but not nearly as explosive as it has in the United States. I mean, in France, the yellow vests are still active. We don't hear much about them because the media has found it wise not to talk about it. I mean, if you don't know about it, is it really there? A tree falls in a forest. Can you hear it if no one is around to hear it? Well, no one can hear it, but that doesn't mean the tree didn't fall. And it's small things like that. And religion, in a way, any form of anthropological social movement, can teach us this, can help us with this. The story of Babel warns us about what happens 
when people lose their unity. And language is a tool to destroy that unity. Now, obviously, religious people reading the story of Babel don't take that aspect of the story as a learnable moment. Maybe some do. What do I know? But I didn't take the God part as the learnable moment. What I took as the learnable moment is that as a society, if we want to stay together, we have to be able to speak each other's languages. We have to be able to understand each other. So the question then becomes, why are people so willing to make sure we do not understand one another? Because that's what the left is doing, especially in Congress in America. Don't get me wrong, I'm not asking anyone to go out and riot or protest. I don't think violence is a good solution either way. We need to find a way to come together, to compromise, not to tolerate, by the way. Tolerate is another dreadful thing. It doesn't work. We make compromises. We accept. We do not tolerate. Tolerate is allowing another to do something we disagree with. How can we come together? How can we stop this polarizing? I don't know. But it starts with recognizing that we cannot allow anyone to disrupt our main tool of communication. And that is language. Do not let our society fall apart like a failed Babel project. Criticism as always is more than welcome. Like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I do look forward from hearing what you think. Now I have been active on several platforms. This video will be out on several platforms and I do hope to see on which platforms it will get the responses and which won't. But um, yeah, like, share and subscribe as I said and feel free to share. And if you want to take anything out of this, uh, by all means go ahead. If you want to talk about it with me, I do have a live stream every Saturday on YouTube. So yeah, this is an open invitation for everyone who wants to pick it up. And I hope to see you all next time.